the Lord was the perfect preacher. He used visual aids, that is, stories that presented a scene. A picture can influence the intellect, and the intellect can influence the will. He presents in the story of Dives, the rich man, and Lazarus, essentially this fundamental truth, that there is a judgment and that a soul can go one way or the other. In this wonderful scene presented by the Lord, we see essentially the bottom line of all, what goes on one moment afterwards. Lazarus is consoled, Dives is lost. And this dialogue goes on. There are two eternities going on now, one moment after death, one in one direction and the other in a very different one. And still Dives is appealing that his brothers may be saved and not brought to this place of torment. We see how his language now is very humble. Just the tip of Lazarus's finger to dip it in water, a little bit of water, and put it on the tip of his tongue because he's tormented. He who had all. And he wants this Lazarus to go and warn his brothers. And he's given to understand that there's a great chasm fixed between the two. That's the difference. There's no encounter or going over backwards and forwards. There's no end. But if someone were to come from this world to the next and warn them, they would surely hear. And he is told that if they have not listened to what they have already, Moses and the prophets, they won't either in that case. Obviously the reason is that the heart is hardened. And good preaching has to aim at the heart. And that's why all the stops must be pulled out if we're to compete with modern entertainment and what is by now acceptable and accepted as the norm for having people's attention. We can't compete unless we know what actually is going to work. Unfortunately, we have a huge handicap because the pulpits have been taken away. And we know from exorcism that that has been pushed by you-know-who because the very fact of standing in a place of authority gives authority. Heart speaks to heart. Cor at cor loquitur. Newman's motto means a lot. The people perceive if there's a heart of a pastor pleading with their heart or if they're watching something which is coming out of a carefully prepared lecture. One is alive, the other is semi-alive. We need to communicate because sermons are actually in their own way of a certain sacramental nature. They do carry grace. And that grace can change eternity and mean that one can end not on Dives' side, but in the other approach to eternity with liftoff. And old Nick has, by the million souls not thinking about it, as did not Dives, the rich man who had all and didn't have to think about anything else. I've often thought how the great preachers of our tradition, Anthony of Padua, who had all kinds of means to get through to his people, even preaching to fish. Bernardino of Siena, 
who swayed the souls by the thousand. We know what he said. Very powerful sermons. Vincent Ferrier, who preached and was understood by all people of all languages. And on we could go. How these have one thing in common, that they pulled out all the stops and the Holy Spirit was working in them and through them. How we have also in common with even the great preachers outside specifically our Roman Catholic Church. We can't deny that grace is present there. Why? The creator of souls wants their redemption, their salvation, their reorientation. And he will work where there is a word which will touch what? The will. The will has to accept grace. So the Lord is going to use what's out there. I remember when I was young seeing the power of preaching. It was a part of our heritage there in Wales. We need to reclaim this central part of our faith and practice. If only preachers knew their duty and their power, they can change eternity. A while back I was thinking about this and I wrote this seeing how it's odd that some of our Protestant brethren, Evangelical brethren, Pentecostal brethren, take this very seriously, very seriously. Perhaps we need to learn. God, I'm sure, uses them to bring souls from darkness of mortal sin to light of grace and prayer and warmth in the precious blood. That process should lead to the fullness of truth, the Catholic faith, but often it doesn't. But at least light comes to a dark, dark soul because they turn to prayer. To turn to prayer is to turn to the precious blood. With tongue in cheek, I wrote this some years ago, but the irony of the fact that God can, as it were, bless an incomplete preaching. Heresy. Let none on earth e'er say that grace is dead in pulpits high of lowest of low church. Or that the sound of utterance, well said, had not the power of sacrament to search the marrows of a soul. Let none, I say, with sharpened nib, the cords umbilical of newborn babes light sever. For a day where on a soul is born, reborn from hell calls all. And though it be well said that water laves and fullness of high touch the clutch of God doth hold the all in poise, a noise that saves upon a day the years and ears that plod toward nether graceless land. The Saviour's hand did bless, thrice bless, and through blessed schism. Come on.